so uh, good morning to everyone again uh, greenworks trust welcomes you to this online session greenworks trust is a mumbai based organization working for nature conservation and we strongly believe that education and awareness are very important for conservation so during this lockdown time we bring to you the informative sessions about various topics our today's topic is about wildlife translocation and mr kartikeya singh will be talking to us about it uh mr kartikeya singh is primarily a wildlife management and ecotourism consultant he is the founder of wildlife and forestry services with a masters degree in ecology and environment and more than 20 years of experience working in the field of wildlife in india uh, this includes 8 years of research experience working with uh, wildlife institute of india studying indian wolves and lions he is one of the specialist involved in the reintroduction of gaur from kana to bandavgarh as an initiative to reverse the local extinction of the species about which he is talking us today uh, he is he has experience developing and implementing conservation management projects for the uh, government translocation of wild animals wildlife conflict management customized training to frontline forest department staff on chemical and physical rescue and uh, rehabilitation uh, training naturalists guides and drivers involved in wildlife tourism industry etc uh, he is the recipient of toft best lodge naturalist of the year 2010 inaugural award and tigerland india biodiversity conservation award 2016 so now i hand over the session to kartike sir uh, sir please continue with the session thank you very much uh, sarvesh i will quickly what i'll do is i will switch on my camera so that you all can at least see my face and uh, hello everyone and then uh, i will uh, i will come back to my presentation is nikhil around i guess he is busy okay he is busy so uh, sarvesh what i really wanted was that i wanted uh, this not to be a discourse but an interaction so i am absolutely open to participants uh, asking questions in the middle of the presentation also i yeah. don't just want to be talking from one side and uh, you know letting the participants wonder how did that happen or how that that thing happened so i'm absolutely open to participants asking me questions and i would request you to moderate the session so maybe people can raise hands or i don't know how they convey it to you that they would like to ask a question but feel free to ask questions uh, if you have any yeah so um, what we can do is uh, if a participant has any doubt uh, the participant can message in the chat box and then we are, i will ask the question to you so that there won't be any disturbance okay. in between absolutely so that works absolutely fine with me yeah uh, so now i will come to our talk uh, so i will uh, switch off the camera for the time being just to save the bandwidth and also uh, you know uh, there is some internet connectivity at my end so i'll switch on the camera for the time being and then go to the talk and then i'll come back to you later okay yeah thank you very much uh, sarvesh uh, for the introduction and also Uh, inviting me to talk to your participants can you all see my screen yes sir okay uh, so this is a story of first mass wildlife translocation in india and the story is about reversal of local extinction of gaur and bandavgarh uh it is a leading example of public private partnership to achieve conservation victories now uh when i say reversal of local extinction of gaur it means that they used to exist there um uh, i hope all of you have seen gaur if you haven't seen gaur at least you know what a gaur look like what what a gaur looks like so this is what a gaur looks like and gaur used to exist in bandavgarh till 1998 before they were declared locally extinct and nobody exactly knew what happened to them nobody studied them 
but there were several theories uh, that floated around saying that uh, they used to locally migrate to nearby adjoining forests and uh, the migration routes got uh, separate and as a result of that the remaining population was so small that it could not sustain itself there were also theories that probably a disease had come in but there are no reports of large number of carcasses found so there was no hard evidence on what exactly happened and nobody even also you know bothered to go deep into it in those days uh, between 95 to 98 to, to find out exactly what is happening you know wildlife management uh, and conservation in our country was still you know um, in very nascent stages and it was developing so in 2006 uh, i coincidentally happened to uh, join taj safaris which was a joint venture between taj group of hotels and a south african company called conservation corporation of africa which later on became and beyond and i joined as head naturalist and in my um, association with taj safaris uh, my my chief naturalist and head of training mr sarath champati when he used to go and meet uh, forest uh, department officials we realized that they have this uh, they they have this uh, proposal to reverse the local extinction of gaur and bandugad and forest department had already put together a beautiful plan on how they want to do it but uh, the, the the actual part of capture of animals and movement of animals was missing then because um, nobody in india had the expertise to uh, do this kind of mass translocation and coincidentally a partner company in south africa uh, had experience doing this for a long long time so we uh, we offered a partnership to madhya pradesh forest department which uh, madhya pradesh forest department uh, willingly agreed uh, the department was being headed by Dr. H. S. Pabla at that time, who was the chief wildlife warden and principal chief conservator of forest. And he was the one who spearheaded the entire program and brought this to uh, uh, final implementation stages and success. The department also involved Wildlife Institute of India, uh, which became the uh, agency which would oversee uh the finer nuances of science and that's how all these organizations came together and uh, uh, ma made this uh, project a success so uh, there was an educational institution there was forest department and there was a tourism agency involved in in this project now uh, we started the project in 2006 and it took us almost five years to actually catch our first animal, which means that a lot of effort went into planning and preparation. And five years, uh, you know, it's not a small time. It's a very, very long time. And mean, in the meantime, a lot of things happened. We had to go through a lot of permissions, a lot of hassles and all that. So just to give you an idea of what happened in those five years was department uh, tried to find out the history of Goa presence in Bandagar Tiger Reserve. They tried to understand the causes of local extinction. Though exact reason was not ascertained, but two or three popular, ex popularly accepted theories were believed to be the must have been the local uh, causes of extinction. You know, justification for reintroduction of uh, Goa in Bandagar. You know, a feasibility study uh, conducted by Wildlife Institute of India food and water requirements of gore whether there is enough uh, you know habitat food um, and uh, area available for the gore in bandhavgad or not permissions for translocation of animals because we were dealing with two tiger reserves national tiger conservation authority was also involved because without their permission we cannot do these things in tiger reserves uh, procurement of licenses to import drugs in fact, the drugs that we used in this capture operations uh, were opioids. And uh, since opioids are uh, controlled by a narcotics department, the, 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 the acts and rules are extremely stringent. And uh, the penalty for illegal import of drugs can be really very heavy. 
uh, obviously since nobody had done uh, uh, such kind of capture and translocation in india before uh, a huge amount of effort went into training of the personnel uh, because uh, you know you can't you can't uh, you can't actually catch a god before you catch a god so we had to do simulations to uh, make people understand what an actual capture, cap capture operation would involve uh, also a simulation of god population viability analysis which was conducted by wildlife institute of india then designing of transport trucks these are specially trucks and containers which actually um, uh, took animals from kana to bandagar after they were captured <laughs> designing of stretchers holding enclosures and loading ramps uh, when the animals went down uh, to pick them up load them into trucks and bring them into <clears throat> capture enclosures and eventually into the loading ramps designing of the release enclosures so capture enclosures were built in kana where the animals were caught and the release enclosures were uh, built in uh, um, uh, bandavgarh where the animals were released procurement of radio collars development of detailed veterinary protocols for capture and translocation and training of field staff uh, recce of routes procurement of veterinary supplies darting equipment so i mean it's, it, it was a long list and uh, it took us almost 5 years to put all this together uh tat safaris and and beyond also sponsored a trip of uh, some uh, park uh, officials like field director of bandagar national park field director of uh, uh panna national park and veterinarians from madhya pradesh forest department and wildlife institute of india we all went together to africa and i actually got a first hand experience of how animals are captured and translocated we also went and saw their uh, capture facilities the infrastructure that they have the team also interacted with uh, the officials at kruger national parks and understood how advanced uh, you know techniques are being used for wildlife management in south africa so in this particular picture you can see uh, the section ranger of uh, kruger uh, steve whitefield is explaining how they use micro light in patrolling areas in kruger national park uh, the team also tried to understand the anti poaching uh, uh, you know um, anti poaching uh, techniques that they use or systems that they use uh, to control uh, poaching of animals in uh, kruger and other parts of south africa uh, we went and saw uh, the capture facilities in a, a area called skuguza in kruger national park so here you can see a capture pen a holding pen which has got a rhino standing in the background can you all see the rhino standing on the background on the lower right side of the screen yes 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 uh, sir th there is a question in the chat box uh, this process has to be followed with respect to every wildlife translocation or with the or with gaur specific no i think every wildlife translocation requires a certain uh, you know set of protocols to be followed and iucn has laid down those protocols international union for conservation and nature so those guidelines have to be followed and the criteria has to be met before you actually translocate any animal from one place to another okay okay thank you sir so here we can see uh, rhinos in the background and what are these rhinos doing here in the background these rhinos are basically captured by kruger authorities and these rhinos are later auctioned so unlike india you know south africa has a has a law where you can buy and sell animals and private players can come and buy these animals uh, which would eventually end up going to either a, a a reserve a private game reserve which has a tourism mandate which means they will allow tourists to come and see these rhinos photograph them and enjoy the wildlife or these rhinos will probably go to a hunting reserve so there are private game reserves in africa where hunting is allowed so private players come and buy these animals 
they take them to hunting reserve and some uh, you know affluent guy comes and hunts them and pays a lot of money and that's how they pump money back into the conservation it's a totally different model from what we follow in india and obviously uh, a lot of questions can be raised on why they do it how they do it but uh, you know we can reserve that uh, discussion for some other time but that that is that is how it works there so this is a place where they capture rhinos and the auctions take place we also try to understood how uh, what kind of equipment they use in uh, translocation so here you can see a container a container which has been converted into a transport truck so basically uh, all they have to do is lift this container and put it on top of a flatbed when they are ready to move animals and when they don't want to move animals they can lift the container and put it aside and use the truck for some other purposes so uh, the head of uh, game capture unit in uh, one of the provincial parks uh, jeff cook was explaining the, about their equipment that they use we also went and saw a mass capture of buffaloes uh, so we thought that an animal which would be more close to our gore would be buffaloes in africa and in this uh, picture you can see a capture facility where they are trying to capture buffaloes and this was a program to eradicate tuberculosis in buffaloes so they mass capture these animals in large numbers they keep them in a holding facility for a few days they draw blood samples and tag each animal and the animals which are found positive of tuberculosis are isolated and culled and the animals which are free from tb are released back into the wild so this is a very labor intensive very cost intensive program which they do and we are nowhere close to doing this in our parks but we we got a chance to go and see how they do it to understand uh, you know what lies ahead for us in india so this is again another uh, slide which explains what kind of equipment is used a very heavy uh, uh, metal equipment to uh, capture these animals because these are very tough animals no animal weighing less than uh, 7 800 kilos um, maximum up to 1000 kilos and you can understand when you have 10 15 of these animals inside uh, a, a holding pen the amount of force that they can exert and the amount of detailed veterinary infrastructure which is required to deal with these animals on the lower left side the picture that you see is of a loading ramp where the animals finally go from the capture facility into the truck and this is the mobile loading ramp which can be moved uh, with the help of a tractor or a truck from one place to another so they go and set up these capture units at different places where they want to identify animals who have got tuberculosis and then later capture them and isolate them we also participated in a buffalo capture in uh, pinda private game reserve which was owned by and beyond and this animal was darted with the help of uh, a tranquilizing gun from a helicopter and later on the ground teams uh, reached there picked up the buffalo loaded into a truck and moved it to a different place just to give us an idea of what it is going to be like when we start capturing gore in india so the team came back from south africa with a lot of learnings and then uh, we went to a local uh, uh, truck manufacturer in jabalpur who 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 saw the designs that we got from africa and manufactured the trucks for us in jabalpur so this is a picture of a transport first transport truck uh, for gore which was built in jabalpur this is still not complete under construction uh in this picture you can see a uh, a fence uh which was made which was built to uh, earmark a uh, 100 hectare plot uh this plot was uh, specially made on the release site in bandugar where the gore was supposed to come and stay uh, for a couple of months before they are released back into the uh, wild
hang on uh, for some reason okay now this is again another uh, picture of uh, Sarvesh, for some reason, this go to meeting panel is coming in my way. How do I minimize it? Uh, some panels you cannot minimize, you can just drag them aside. Okay, but I don't even see the cursor. So, how do I do that? Uh, Hang on, I will just drag it aside. Okay, and then come back. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry for that. Oh. So again, uh, this is another picture of uh, the release fence in Bandavgarh, the holding pen in Bandavgarh. And the person standing in the middle in the camera is uh, the, the then field director of uh, uh, Bandavgarh Tiger Reserve, Mr. Chandrakant Patil. And the gentleman in the white beard on the left was the group conservation manager for and beyond. His name is Les Carlisle. And he was the one who actually uh, spearheaded the project from and beyond and Taj Safari side. So on this side was Dr. Pabla who was spearheading the project and on that side South Africa was Les Carlisle who has experience catching nothing less than 50,000 animals in his lifetime and translocating 50,000 animals in his lifetime. So we had people who had immense experience capturing and moving these animals without you know letting a lot of casualties happen. Then we approached uh, Gore on elephant back in Kana to understand how easy or difficult it would be to dart them from elephant back. And, uh, you know, we in India are used to, those who are in tourism definitely are used to uh, of going on elephant back. But it was a very pleasant surprise for South Africans who really enjoyed riding elephants and approaching anim anim animals on elephant back. In Africa, they do it either on vehicles or they do it from helicopters. But elephant is something that is a novelty for uh, people in South Africa. So they really enjoyed doing this. And uh, we also learned that we could get very close to these animals within the darting ranges. And once, uh, once the, the gore herd starts moving, so you can see a few animals in the background on the left hand side, they are going inside the forest. So, uh, so we realized that with the help of elephants, we can track the herd. And when we are catching, we are able to send the elephants following these herds and make sure that the herd doesn't get lost so that all the animals that we capture are from the same herd um, uh, so that there is a, a sense of, uh, you know, bonding even when they are in, inside the capture enclosures. Uh, sir, there is a question. Uh, which drugs are used to tranquilize wild animals? Uh, do different species require different drugs? Yes, definitely. Every species will require a different drug. And it's a deep science uh, which is well understood by the veterinarians. But yes, definitely, you know, every species requires a different kind of drug. I mean, there can be drugs which are similar to certain species but then the dosages will vary from you know species to species okay so for example you can uh, you can uh, tranquilize a lot of ungulates using one particular drug but that particular drug may not work on carnivores yeah understood okay yeah uh, we also uh, imported some state of art equipment uh, in india in uh, 2007 and 8 these uh, guns were not being in, used in India. Or, uh, we got introduced to them in uh, South Africa uh, in 2007 and 8. Uh, but now, uh, after this project, almost every forest department is using these guns. And they are from Dan Inject, uh, very effective and very, uh, you know, good technology when it comes to tranquilizing animals. Uh, Tata Motors uh, kindly donated two trucks to us. One was a big truck, which I showed you uh, in my previous slide. And this was a se second truck which they donated to us. It was a Tata 407, but it was 4x4. So we had the advantage of taking this truck anywhere inside the forest where the animal uh, was tranquilized. And if needed, 
we could put the animal on this truck and bring it out uh, and load it into a bigger truck. So these two uh, vehicles uh, proved out to be extremely useful uh, during this capture operation. So this was the ready truck after it was fabricated in Jabalpur. Yeah, we also got some stretchers locally designed. So what happens is uh, once a gore is tranquilized, it just falls down on the ground. And immediately once the animal falls down on the ground, the veterinary team has to reach there and uh, establish the, the parameters and vitals and uh, give us a go ahead that the animal is uh, looking okay and it is ready to be lifted. Now it is absolutely impossible to lift a 800 kg or a 1000 kg animal and put it on a stretcher. So we have to use a technique where you roll the animal on its uh, back and roll it back onto its hunches. Uh, and between the two things, uh, the stretcher has to be put underneath. Um, when you have a 1000 kg animal on the stretcher, it is almost impossible for a few people to lift it. So we used hollow pipes to manufacture these stretchers, which could be inserted with solid iron rods. So you can see there is a rod in the middle of the stretcher, uh, which uh, proved out to be an extension. So there were six such extension, uh, five or six such extension in every stretcher and 25 to 30 people could lift the, lift the stretcher at any given time. So that is how these stretchers were made. This is a, a, a drawing of the holding uh, or the capture enclosure that we build in Kana. Now the holding area, this is a teardrop shape. This is the holding area. Now let us imagine, can you all see my cursor? Yes, sir. Okay, let us imagine this is where we captured, this is where we tranquilized the gore. Once the animal goes down, it is put on a stretcher, it is loaded into a truck, and the truck drives with the animal and brings it here. Here, the animal is loaded, offloaded from the truck, this gate is opened, and the stretcher is moved here. And this gate is then closed. Once the stretcher is moved here, we establish the vitals of the animal. Uh, we put a radio collar on the animal and the stretcher is removed and everyone moves out except the veterinarian who is going to revive the animal. Once everyone moves out, once we are ready to revive the animal, the animal is given an antidote and these two gates are opened and the animal gets up and comes and stands in this area. Once we have four or five animals in this area, these two gates are again opened. The animals are pushed from this side. They run here and this is the loading ramp which eventually ends up into a truck. Oh, uh, I don't know why this uh, thing keeps popping again and again. Okay, now in this slide, you can see the first animal being darted. You can actually see the dart, which is already stuck on the rump of the animal there. Um, the veterinary officer from Pinch Tiger Reserve uh, is the one who's tranquilizing the animal with Jeff Cook. Uh, who was the capture ex expert from uh, South Africa who was helping him. And in this slide, you can see the first animal going down. It is sliding down. Unfortunately, this animal slid into a nyla, which is not a great position for an animal uh, to be in an unconscious state. So it, it, it can develop complications there. But uh, a capture manager and a capture expert has to be ready with all the eventualities that any situation and field is going to present to you. So our teams were ready for that. And the moment this animal went down, uh, it slid into a very awkward position. And if animal stays in this position for a long time, there's a good chance that the animal dies. But uh, 
uh, capture experts from South Africa. They understood the situation. They understood what needs to be done. They ran to the animal, held the animal by its horn and brought it into the right position. So when you tranquilize herbivores, if you leave the animal in a, in a, in a, a flat lying position, there's a good chance that the animal dies. So you have to bring the animal in, on its hunches in a sternal position where the, where the head of the animal is held uh, high. Uh, you have to also be very careful. There are no water bodies nearby because sometimes when animals uh, are tranquilized, there is a chance that they will walk to a water body. And even if the nose of the animal dips into the water before the animal is completely tranquilized, there's no way you can go and hold the animal and the animal is likely to kill you or drown itself. So these are the challenges which a capture manager has to deal with when you are trying to capture animals. But uh, the capture experts and the field director of Kana National Park were swift in their action and they managed to uh, you know, bring the animal in the correct posture. Uh, you can see a, a band which is on the eyes of the animal so that it doesn't see what is happening around it. Um, their reflexes are still working. So in order for them not to get stressed, you put an eye bandana around their eyes. But the, but the position you see, it's a very narrow nala. There's no place for a truck to come here. There's no place for a stretcher to come here. So what we had to do was we had to pull this animal to a place which was slightly in a more opening area and then load it onto a stretcher. Now here, I'll explain you. There was a question on how do you bring the animal on a stretcher? Now you can see um, um, the stretcher team is holding the stretcher. Can you all see the gore on the lower side of the slide? You can't see the head, but you can see the body here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and, and what happens is one person holds the animal by its horns. One person holds the animal by its tail and the remaining team turns the animal upside down on its back, which means the four legs, all the four legs of the animals are up in the air and the animal is in totally upside down position. The moment animal goes into an upside down position with all the four legs up, the stretcher team pushes the stretcher underneath and the other team rolls the animal back onto his hunches. And this entire process doesn't take more than two to three seconds. You have to be very swift in doing it. And the team has to be well explained and they need to understand what exactly needs to be done. So you hold the animal by its horn, by its tail, roll the animal up, roll the animal back and it's onto a stretcher. So have I made myself clear here? Yes. So that's how you bring the animal onto a stretcher. Once the animal comes onto a stretcher, it is strapped onto a stretcher with the help of ropes. Extension pipes are inserted into a stretcher so that people can lift it. And then the animal is lifted out of the place to a truck. In this case, we are lifting this animal out of a nala, which was an extremely awkward situation. But you can see, you can see the teams are doing it, whereas Liz and uh, Dr. Cooper are standing in the background and they are overseeing the uh, operation. Now, in that picture... Sorry, can you allow? There's another question. Could I ask? Yes. Okay. Uh, there's Chinmay Chari asking, any clinical reason for the death of the herbivores when they are tranquilized in the wrong position? So what happens is these are ruminants and they are likely to regurgitate. And when they regurgitate, the regurgitated material is likely to go back into the trachea and into the lungs. And that's, that's what can cause mortality if the animal keeps lying in the wrong position for a long time. Also, you know, since these are herbivores and ruminants, they also develop a bloat means uh, the stomach gases are not able to escape. The animals are not able to belch and the bloat, uh, you know, the stomach bloats and puts so much pressure on the diaphragm 
and onto the heart that it eventually uh, leads to uh, a cardiac arrest thank you sir thank you okay this thing keeps popping up again and again i don't know why so how do i so you can take the entire box and drag it to a far corner on you know, yes, but I can't see my cursor only. You can, you can just first pairs, uh, hold it, hold the strip and flip it on the right so it becomes vertical. Then it won't come on the front. Yeah, no, I, I did that, but it keeps. Can you all see the window on the right? No, we don't see the window. We can just see. You the don't screen. see only. I see it. Okay, okay that's okay. Then you can be able to see the window. So okay, I'll, that's I'll fine. Turn it unobstructed, yeah. Okay, your viewers. Are, so that's okay. So you, here you can see that's myself uh, holding the gore by its horns, standing in the middle. And this is a really big uh, cow, probably weighing about seven to eight hundred kilos, which we are lifting with the help of a stretcher onto a four by four truck with the help of the stretcher and a team of 20, 25 people. Now uh, the slide is also not moving. I don't know what's happening here. Just click on the screen once it will move. OK. So um, in this picture again, you can see. A big uh, core uh, gore is being put onto a truck. And in this picture, you see a weighing scale which was tied onto a tree, so we tried to weigh animals which we could i mean obviously we could not weigh all the animals because some animals were much uh, you know heavier more heavier than 7 to 800 kilos but we tried to weigh animals up to 5 to 600 kilos just to get an idea about the ocular estimates that we were making in uh, giving the drug dosages because when you see an animal you don't know the exact weight of the animal but the dose of the drug is calculated based on uh, an estimated weight. So we, we wanted to make sure that the, the weights that we were estimating were more or less close to what the actually weight was. So we tried to animals weigh the animals which we could. And in this case, uh, with the help of a weighing scale tied on a tree, the truck was brought under the tree. Uh, the entire stretcher was strapped to the weighing scale with the help of chains. And slowly the truck was moved out and the animal was weighed and again truck was brought back in and and the, and the and the chains were removed and the animal was later on moved to uh, the capture enclosure as i say maintenance of sternal recumbency is most uh, critical uh, urgent and important aspect of immobilization of the gore uh, they can regurgitate the material that they have eaten and uh, there's a likely chance that the regurgitated material goes into the uh, trachea and there's a chance of animal dying. Now here you can see, see Dr. Uh, uh, Shankar from Wildlife Institute of India fitting the animal with a radio collar. And then eventually on the right side, you can see Dr. Dave Cooper who is giving an antidote to the animal after the entire process of capture and radio collaring is over so that the animal can comfortably go and stand into the capture enclosure. So here's the first gore which we caught standing in the capture enclosure. Uh, not more than half an hour after uh, it was tranquilized. We repeated this exercise six to seven times on first day and uh, the animals that were caught we caught five animals. We actually lost one animal on this particular day uh, uh, because uh, of the same reason uh, the regurgitated material went back into the trachea and the animal, animal died. But we successfully captured five animals and moved them to Kana. We lost only one animal in the entire operation and uh, uh, the the teams were quickly and uh, adept in understanding what were the reasons for the death of this animal we also uh, got a few more drugs and made sure that no, no animal dies after this one and here you can see a convoy of uh, trucks uh, 
moving with uh, with a truck load of goa to bandavgarh national park so we arrived in the night and after 13 years the goa were released back into bandavgarh national park in the night and here you can see gaur moving out of the truck in bandavgarh national park so we continued this operation and in our first capture operation in 2011 we we tranquilized 21 animals out of which one animal died and one animal uh, we were not sure uh because the moment it was tranquilized a small calf uh you know came and sat next to it now we were not not sure if it she was the mother of that calf or whether she was just a group member uh and we also tried to see if she was lactating she was not but since we were not 100% sure that she was the mother of that calf we decided that we are not going to take that animal and we revive that animal and let it go back into the wild so 19 animals uh, reached uh, bandavgarh in 2011 and 31 animals were brought in 2012 you can see uh, gaur coming out of the trucks in bandavgarh and this particular gaur is charging uh my senior uh, mr sarath champati who was trying to take a photograph of this animal from outside the fence so here's the team uh, the gentleman who is standing in the middle with turban was dr pabla who spearheaded the entire project a uh, gentleman with the white beard is les carlyle group conservation manager Uh, to his left is Jeff Cook, Cook, who is also a capture manager from South Africa. To Dr. Pablo's uh, uh, left is Dr. Dave Cooper. Next to Dr. Cooper is Mridula, who was the director of operations from Taj Safaris in those days. Uh, two directors and direct, director and deputy director of Bandavgarh Tiger Reserve and Kana Tiger Reserve, Sarath and myself. and that's a beautiful picture of uh, les who is holding a gore by its horn and ears because this animal didn't go down uh, fully because probably uh, either the dose was not enough or or uh, the drug did in, didn't inject properly so he actually went and held the animal by its horns and brought it down onto its knees and then the vet doubled up and gave a shot of Uh, a little more drugs so that the animal calms down and it can be brought back into the capture enclosure now uh, normally i have a video which i play but it won't play very well here so what i'll do is i'll send a link of this video to sarvesh and sarvesh maybe you can share it with all the participants uh, after this meeting is over yes sir so the current population of gaur and bandavgarh tiger reserve is more than 150 and that's an increase in population so this is an old slide but the population increase is by 300% from 2011 to 2020 is almost almost 9 years the population has gone up by 300% so this is an excellent example of uh, you know Uh, the conservation agencies the educational institutions and tourism agency is coming together for conservation and uh, there's a lot there's a lot that tourism can do for conservation provided it is done in the right spirit and in the right manner so let us hope that such project will prove to be harbinger of changes in our approach to conservation which it it was always meant to be perhaps we will no longer just wring our hands when the extinction of particular species looms in front of us we can now prevent or reverse such extinctions thanks to the gore project let us hope however that the next project will not take 6 years from conception to implementation 
adaptive and proactive management must become the hallmark of modern day pm management in india and actually it didn't take 6 years for the next project after this project uh, uh, the capture teams in india you know in madhya pradesh they learned you know brilliant techniques of capture and translocation uh, uh, soon after this uh, the tigers uh, went to panna uh, uh, a lot of spotted deer were locally translocated to uh, sort of uh, do prey augmentation in different uh, tiger reserve in central india and also madhya pradesh forest department has created a second population of bara singa in satpura tiger reserve which was much needed because we had all the eggs in one single basket so uh, now there is a population of bara singa in satpura apart from kana and all thanks to you know uh, this gor project which you know uh, brought in all the expertise and techniques and the training which was required here in india to do these kind of conservation projects thank you very much i'm happy to take questions uh, if there are any Uh, hello sir there is a question uh, from kartik uh, what are your ideas about cheetah reintroduction in the indian wild well it's a, it's quite a controversial and debatable topic you will find people who are for it and you will also find people who are against it personally if you ask my opinion i absolutely don't see any problem uh some people also say that you know why invest in a foreign species when you have so much to deal with within india uh you know why shouldn't we bring lions to kuno first before we bring cheetahs and uh, why do we have to bring cheetahs before we bring lions all those are very pertinent questions but uh, what i have to say is personally speaking cheetah is a cheetah if you want to bring cheetah you can always very well bring cheetah but if you want to bring both the species if you want to bring lion and cheetah in the same landscape personally i think the cheetah should be brought first and then the lions because if you bring cheetahs after you bring lions cheetahs might find it difficult to adapt to, the, to that ecosystem okay and there is one more uh, is any such project is done for neel gai uh uh we i was involved in a capture and a translocation project of nilgai uh but that was more for trying to understand whether they can be captured in mass numbers or not so we used a different technique to capture nilgai uh in central india which was a mass capture technique here you see that we have tranquilized every gor hand lifted that animal and brought that into a captivity and then loaded them into a truck and moved them to bandargarh but in nilgai we used helicopters and horses to capture them but uh, uh, that was more to understand whether you can capture them and once you capture them what are the options you can do um, and as we go ahead with our understanding with these animals we realize that capture and translocation of problem animals is not a solution uh, so uh, so when you capture you have to have a exact reason why you want to capture them maybe you know stock stocking some areas which are low on prey where there is a presence of carnivores maybe it can be used in those uh, in that context or maybe it can be used in a context where you are uh, using contraception techniques uh, to limit the population of growth of population of these animals i don't know there is no clear answers but yes we do have a technique where we have mass captured nilgai with the help of helicopters and horses in madhya pradesh thank you uh, does translocation affect the behavior of the translocated gor or the behavior of its previous herd from where it was uh, it was translocated well uh, uh, for a short period yes but i don't think there are any detailed studies on whether it has a severe impact uh, obviously when an animal is brought into a new area they have their own instincts they try to move towards their home 
they try to move to areas they they don't know the areas but if you hold the animal into an area for a long time they tend to settle down and establish themselves so uh, more studies need to be done on what impacts uh, uh, are there on capture and translocation i would imagine short term impacts yes in the longer run maybe uh, once the animals they settle down uh, they just accept that area to be a part of their ecosystem and they happily live there so like today if you go to bandargarh you will just uh, see you know herds of goat happily you know living in bandargarh grazing doing the stuff that they would regularly do when they were inside an enclosure sometimes they would go and you know hit the fences try to go out of the fences not understanding where they have come so yes in the shorter run uh, uh, it is there and uh, that's a that's a that's a price that you pay for trying to conserve these animals and uh, and uh, uh, reverse the local extinction of these species yeah then one more question uh, was the manas rhino rehabilitation the same challenges well uh, i was not involved in manas rhino uh, translocation but i think it must have been equally a big challenge because uh, a rhinos are much much bigger than uh, gore <coughs> uh, and uh, and tranquilizing a rhino uh, you know lifting a rhino moving it into a crate requires a completely different set of expertise um, uh which uh, you know our conservation agencies ngos have been so i would imagine it, it it was quite a project to deal with and quite okay uh then one more question sir how can we contact you in the future if we want to uh, the question is from uh, ruchi latkar she is a veterinary student and she is saying that she will love to learn more from you okay so uh, in my previous slide i had given you my email address feel free to write to me i can also give you my phone numbers or maybe sarvesh you can share my phone numbers with the participants if okay. they would like to connect to me on whatsapp or any other media okay uh then what are the challenges involved in the capture and translocation of carnivore species well <clears throat> carnivores it's a completely different ball game you know uh, a uh, the drugs that you use are completely different uh obviously uh, when you tranquilize carnivores there are complications with drugs but uh, uh, in carnivores you don't deal with such lethal uh, uh, drugs like drugs that we used on, use on carnivores in india uh, are largely ketamine and xylazine uh, which is widely used on tigers and uh, and leopards and other animals uh, and uh, many countries like south africa have already stopped using these drugs they have much more advanced drugs that they use but we still use uh, you know uh, ketamine and xylazine uh i think the drugs uh, in uh, that we used in herbivores especially in gore are much much more lethal compared to carnivores obviously uh, the challenges are there you have to be very particular as far as doses dosages are concerned you have to be very particular as far as the processing of the animal is concerned and also you have to be very careful in reviving the animal but uh, i think the chances of animal dying are much more when you tranquilize herbivores than you uh, tranquilize carnivores uh, uh, but having said, said that there is no set rule it totally depends on how stressed the carnivore is especially like let's say if there is a leopard which has gone into a locality and it is stressed or if it's a tiger which has fallen into a well or has gone into an area uh, where th there are too many people it it has been or if it's snared and and it has been trying to fight out of that snare you know i think the uh, the metabolic metabolic state of that animal is completely different and there are you know sometimes instances when 
uh, animals die out of uh, overdoses is, or underdoses. Uh, so all these things are uh, challenging, difficult, and unless you have experienced veterinarians and experienced capture managers, um, it is difficult to you know run these operations. Um, veterinarians are absolutely critical, and uh, not just vet veterinarians. The person who manages the capture is also absolutely critical. Veterinarian has a role to play. Um, you know, after the animal, when the animal is tranquilized and after the animal is revived. But after that, uh, or before that, a capture manager has a very big role to play in managing a capture operation. Okay. So, any change in the ecology of Bandago Tiger Reserve after reintroduction of gore? Oh, well, that's a very big question. I may not be able to answer this question to you. Uh, what I can do is I can put you in touch with the gentleman who did his PhD on gore in Bandavgarh. So all the gore that we caught, some of them were uh, uh, were uh, fitted with radio collars. And a student from Wildlife Institute of India, his name is Navaneetan, who did his PhD on gore in Bandavgarh. What I can do is I can share his email address and phone numbers with you, Sarvesh, and you, maybe you can send the email address and uh, phone numbers uh, of Navinitan to the participants. Yes. And if they would like to understand any changes in ecology or behavior of these animals, I think he is the right person to talk to. My role was limited to the translocation. And what happened beyond that was largely in the hands of forest department and uh, the researchers. Okay, sure. I'll share the uh, contact number uh, once you shared it with me. So, uh, are there any such plans for the translocation of uh, Gujarat Lions to MP? Well, the plans have been there for a long, long time, more than 20, 25, 30 years now. I don't know exact figure, but they've been there for a long time. Not just plans. Supreme Court has also said that Gujarat has to give Lions to Madhya Pradesh. But uh, Gujarat state has not paid any heed to it. And I think there are review petitions in Supreme Court uh, citing contempt of court uh, on part of Gujarat. So plans are there. The court has said it should happen, but uh, it hasn't happened. I think it's just a matter of time. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. So, can we mass capture and treat lions in the gear and treat or find solutions for the diseases that they are suffering from the way they did for buffaloes in Africa? Well, uh, you don't need to mass capture lions. Uh, they are easily approachable um, either on foot or on vehicles. So, you definitely can, uh, you know, tranquilize them and draw blood samples and to and find out whether they have still diseases in them or not, uh, whether there's a need to do something or not. But definitely, you know, it's going to be a very uh, cost-intensive, labor-intensive program um, uh, with a lot of challenges. So, I mean, if you want it, it's possible. But uh, uh, I don't know whether Gujarat Forest Department is planning to do it or whether they should do it. Only, you know, um, Experts who understand uh, the diseases well should be able to answer that question. But it's possible to capture lions. Yeah. Not mass capture. You can capture them in, in, in just like you captured gore. You can tranquilize one, two, three, four, five, six in a day and draw blood samples and, and find them. Okay. And then how do you decide that how many males and females of animals are to be translocated? That study was conducted by Wildlife Institute of India and uh, a population viability analysis what was done by Wildlife Institute of India. So Sarvesh, uh, uh, this gore translocation project, after this project, we also came up with a small publication. It's a booklet. 
I'm going to share that booklet to you, which has all the detailed protocols which were followed and all the studies which were done to, to decide how many animals need to be moved, how many males, how many females. And obviously, apart from what uh, Wildlife Institute of India suggested us, the donating uh, uh, agencies, which was the Kana management and uh, the receiving agency, which was the Bandhavgad management, uh, they also, you know, uh, given their inputs and saying that, okay, this female looks uh, nice and young. It will be very useful on the uh, on the receiving end if she goes there because uh, she is likely to, you know, breed when she goes to Bandhugarh and uh, have more calves in the years to come. So, so those apart from what Wildlife Institute of India suggested us. The experts are on ground decided which animals to be picked and moved. Okay, sir. Okay. Uh, then we have one more question. Uh, what extent of translocation in India could we reach if uh, translocation can prove to be uh, effective, keeping in the mind different type of species and population of these? Well, translocation is not always the answer. You know, um, you can use it. Um, at some places, uh, you cannot use it everywhere. Uh, uh, places where uh, there is potential to bring in species and establish them, uh, you could do that. Uh, where there are animals already in slow, small numbers, uh, you can give protection to those places and and expect uh, you know populations to build up. So. Because translocations are not, uh, you know, cheap programs. They are very, very expensive programs, and uh, um, it is not possible always to uh, uh, do these translocations everywhere. And they are not always the answer. But yes, it can definitely be a very effective tool, uh, provided you have the finances to do such kind of programs. Okay. And then, how can underdose of tranquilizer kill an animal? So what happens is, you know, I always, you know, uh, feel though I'm not a veterinarian, but I always feel that uh, slightly overdosing is much more safer than uh, underdosing because uh, because when an underdose animal is approached, it has not totally gone down. It can it can still see what is happening and it comes under stress. And when the animal comes under stress, uh, there are chemical, you know, uh, there's a chemical release in the body which causes a lot of other functions in the body to disrupt. When there is an overdose, you can always the revive the animal by, you know, uh, giving an antidote. But when an, when there is an underdose, and when you are trying to approach the animal, the animal has not completely gone down. You are running after the animal. You are trying to catch the animal. You are trying to give, you've already given one shot, the animal is running, you are trying to give the second shot, the animal comes under a lot of stress and that can cause more further complications rather than overdose. And both the things are, I mean, I'm not saying that underdose is safer, both the things are dangerous. The right dose and the right uh, shot is always extremely critical. If you can bring down the animal in one shot, there's nothing like it. Okay, uh, then how many numbers increase after translocation? I think you have answered that in the presentation. 200. I don't have the exact number, but I think uh, I think uh, we moved 50 animals and there are more than 50, 150 to 170 animals. So more than two to 300 percent. That slide is a little old. I think 300 percent population increases there. Okay, then uh, gear line decreases are due to inbreeding. Is the question? I don't get the question exactly. Okay, no, I haven't got the question. Yeah, uh, Sanjay Kale, sir, can you unmute yourself and ask the question? Hello. Uh, yes, sir, sir. I, I wanted to uh, know if the if the if the, the diseases for gear lions are due to inbreeding. 
it could be i am not exactly sure you know i think uh, i am not the right person to you know answer that question somebody who has studied on lions like dr ravi chellam or meena venkatraman or dr yv chala they should be able to answer those questions okay thank you uh if the tranquilizer dose is deadly to humans and person can die as mentioned in the presentation why it does not uh, affect animal in the same way you will be very surprised that uh, these drugs uh, uh, work differently on physiology of different animals and the biggest surprise would be that the dose required for an elephant is much much smaller than the dose required uh, for a goat so every animal has its own physiology its own metabolism and these drugs work differently on different species so oh. this drug which is extremely lethal to humans you know a tiniest drop can kill a person you know about an ml nothing happens to to a god oh. okay and then according to dr vidya atreya's research on human leopard conflict it was observed that there were increased case uh, of human leopard conflict after translocation in junnar district of maharashtra were there any similar conditions observed here in gor no so actually uh, dr vidya atreya's research you know is uh, uh, tran about translocation of conflict animals from from conflict areas to other areas you know uh, in gor we Uh, were not moving conflict animals. We picked up animals from inside a national park and moved them to a national park. So uh, both the situations are completely different. Uh, uh, I understand that uh, translocation of conflict animals is not always the solution, and there are complications involved with translocation of conflict animals. But uh, you know both these uh, cases are not comparable. one is translocation of conflict animals and second is translocation of animals from one national park to another another national park and these animals are not in conflict with people okay uh, i think uh, most of the questions are over if uh, any more question are there people can ask they can unmute themselves and ask are there any questions uh i think the questions are over you have answered uh, most of the questions sir so i uh, okay. thank uh, thank you uh, for sharing this valuable information about the uh, first successful uh, project on um, uh, translocation of the wildlife i thank you on behalf of greenworks trust for this uh, lovely session and i hope everyone must have enjoyed the session and the discussion part of the that Uh, so greenworks trust uh, wish to bring uh, such uh, well, uh, informative sessions to you uh, every day so i request everyone to make a small donation to our organization and support our nature education and awareness initiative uh, i will share the uh, details on the whatsapp group uh, if anyone wishes to donate so thank you once again kartikeya sir for giving us the valuable time and thank you everyone for joining the session have a good day all Thank you very much. Thank and you, sir. So uh, do Thank share you. all the uh, contacts and the booklet with me so that I can share it with the participants. I will send it across. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you.